Welcome to the brand new series of data modeling. In this series, you would learn what is data modeling, what are the different kinds of schema, what are the relationships, how to model your data in Power BI and much more. This is the episode one. So without any further ado, let's get started. The very first question comes into our mind is, what is data modeling? Data modeling is the process of creating data model for the data to be stored in a database. This data model is a conceptual representation of a data object, the association between different data objects and the rules. Now you know what is data modeling, so what would be our next step? Now we are going to have a look into another aspect of that. That why do we need to use the data modeling? Why is it so important? I'm sure you are working on many of the different reporting or BI system or even in the database modeling. But there also you need to do your data modeling. And if you don't know, then you should know this answer that why you need data modeling. Well, Data modeling helps in the visual representation of data and enforces business rules, regulatory compliances, and government policies on the data. Data models ensure consistency in naming convention, default values, semantics, security, while ensuring quality of the data. These are the main reasons that it's so important. Also, while fetching data from the different data sources, you also design your data model if you are working in Power BI. And it's not only in Power BI, any other data visualization tool or any database, you need to do your data modeling so that you can get the data from the different entities. After discussing this, let's discuss the data model. Well. The data model is defined as an abstract model that organizes data description, data semantics, and consistency constraint of data. The data model emphasizes on what data is needed and how it should be organized instead of what operations will be performed on the data. Data model is like an architect's building plan, which helps to build conceptual models and set a relationship between data items. There are mainly two data modeling techniques. One is known as entity relationship model and another is known as UML or unified modeling language. Now let's get into deeper and let's try to understand what are these. The very first we are going to discuss about the entity relationship data model. So what is it? Well. Entity Relationship Model or ER Modeling is a graphical approach to database design. It is high-level data model that defines data elements and their relationship for a specified software system. You should also remember that an ER model is used to represent real-world objects. An entity has a set of properties. Now, an entity is a thing or object in real-world that is distinguishable from surrounding environments. For example, your table in your database. Now let's talk about the UML diagrams or another data modeling techniques, which I was saying unified modeling language. UML diagram stands for unified modeling language. It is a standard which is mainly used for creating object oriented meaningful documentation models from any software system present in the real world. It provides us a way to develop rich models that describe the working of any software hardware system. However, you should note over here, UML is an essential part of creating an object-oriented design of systems. It provides you means for creating powerful models and design for rational systems which can be understood without much difficulties. Now another question arises, 
why use data model? Well, in the very first part, I told you that what are the benefits of a data model or why actually you should use it. So now let's discuss some of the primary goal of using data model. The very first comes over here. It ensures that all data objects required by the database are accurately represented. That means you have your different tables, you have different objects into your database and you have to get the data from them using your SQL language. So in that case, if you are using a relational database, how you can connect all those different objects, how you can get the data that is going to handle by the data modeling part. You should also remember that omission of data will lead to creation of faulty reports and produce incorrect results. That means if your relationships are not correct, if your data modeling is not correct, then definitely you won't get the accurate or correct results. A data model helps design that database at the conceptual, physical and logical levels. So I'm going to discuss each of them one by one later on that what is the conceptual data modeling, what is physical and what is logical. So these are the basically three different kinds of data modeling techniques that we use while doing the data modeling. Over here, you should also note that data model structure helps to define the relational tables primary and foreign key and stored procedures. So whenever you are going to connect between two different tables, then there should be a relationship between them. In our data modeling, we generally do it using the primary and foreign key relationship. Another primary goal of data modeling is it provides a clear picture of the base data and can be used by database developers to create physical database. It is also helpful to identify missing and redundant data and lastly, though the initial creation of the data model is labor and time consuming, in the long run, it makes your IT infrastructure upgrade and maintenance cheaper and faster. So these were the primary goal of using a data model. There can be many more cases, but that depends on the case to case, why you are using and what you are doing. Now let's discuss one by one, what are the different types of data models? Well, basically there are the three different kinds of data models, namely conceptual data model, logical data model, and physical data model. Conceptual data model is the data model that defines what the system contains. This model is physically created by business stakeholders and data architects. The purpose is to organize, scope, and define business concept and rules. So this is a very high level data model. Next to this comes the logical data model, which is going to define how the system should be implemented regardless of the DBMS, that is database management system. This model is typically created by data architects and business analysts. The purpose of this is to develop a technical map of rules and data structures. And lastly, the physical data model is the data model which describes how the system will be implemented using a specific DBMS system. This model is typically created by DBN developers and the purpose is actual implementation of the database. Now we are going to dig deeper into the different kinds of data models one by one. And the very first comes the conceptual data model. A conceptual data model is an organized view of database concepts and their relationships. The purpose of creating a conceptual data model is to establish entities, their attributes and relationships. In this data modeling level, there is hardly any detail available on the actual database structure. Business stakeholders and data architects typically create a conceptual data model. Now let's consider an example. In the example, you can see you have two different tables, customer and product. These are your entities. The columns inside them are going to known as your attributes and the relationship between them is going to be your relationship. There are certain characteristics of a conceptual model. The very first is it offers organization wide coverage of the business concept. Secondly, this type of data models are designed and developed for a business audience. 
and lastly the conceptual model is developed independently of hardware specifications like data storage capacity location or software specifications like dbms vendor and technology the focus is to represent data as a user will see it in the real world here you should note a very important point that conceptual data models known as domain models create a common vocabulary for all stakeholders by establishing basic concepts and scope. Now we are going to discuss about logical data model. The logical data model is used to define the structure of data elements and to set the relationship between them. The logical data model adds further information to the conceptual data model elements. The advantage of using a logical data model is to provide a foundation to form the base for the physical model. However, the modeling structure remains generic. Here, you will see the table, customer and product and there is also certain characteristics for this logical data model. At this data modeling level, no primary or secondary key is defined. At this data modeling level, you need to verify and adjust the connector details that was set earlier for relationships. And if we talk about the characteristics of a logical data model, then you should remember it describes data needs for a single project but could integrate with other logic data models based on the scope of the project. Secondly, it designed and developed independently from the DPMS. Thirdly, data attributes will have data types with exact precision and length. And lastly, normalization processes to the model is applied typically till third normal form. Now we are going to move to the last part, which is a physical data model. A physical data model describes a database specific implementation of the data model. It offers database abstraction and helps to generate the schema. This is because of the richness of metadata offered by a physical data model. And if you don't know what is metadata, metadata is a data about a data. That means, suppose you have your different columns in a table. Now, what is the type of the data inside that? What is the length? So those are known as the metadata. That means data about data. The physical data model also helps in visualizing database structure by replicating database column, keys, constraints, indexes, triggers, and other RDBMS features. Here you define your primary and secondary key as well. So if we talk about the characteristics of a data model, the very first is the physical data model describes data need for a single project or application though it may be integrated with other physical data models based on project scope. Secondly, physical data model contains relationship between tables that which addresses cardinality and nullability of the relationships. Thirdly, it develops for a specific version of a DBMS, location, data storage or technology to be used in the project. Number fourth, physical data model columns should have exact data types, lengths assigned and default values. And lastly, physical data model has primary and foreign keys, views, indexes, access profile and authorizations, etc. which are well defined inside it. Now we are going to have a look about the advantages and disadvantages of a data model. So let's go through them. Okay, now we are going to discuss first the advantages of a data model. The main goal of a designing data model is to make certain that data objects offered by the functional teams are represented accurately. So we are doing the data modeling so that we can get the accurate data while querying the data or while querying the database or while getting information in a report. The second one is the data model should be detailed enough to be used for building the physical database. Thirdly, the information in the data model can be used for defining the relationships between tables, primary and foreign keys and stored procedures. Also, data model helps business to communicate within and across the organizations. And 
Data model helps to document data mappings in ETL processes. Lastly, another advantage is data model helps to recognize correct sources of data to populate the model. Now we are going to discuss about some of the disadvantages as well. And the very first is to develop a data model, one should know physical data stored characteristics. Secondly, this is a navigational system produces complex application development management. Thus, it requires a knowledge of the biographical truth. Thirdly, even smaller change made in structure requires modification in the entire application. And lastly, there is no set data manipulation language in DBMS. So these were some of the disadvantages of the data model. Now we are going to summarize it. So let's have a look at the summary, what we have learned so far. The very first we learned data modeling is a process of developing data model for the data to be stored in a database. Then we learned data models ensures consistency in naming conventions, default values, semantics, security, while ensuring quality of the data. Then we also learn that data model structure helps to define the relational tables, primary key, foreign key, and stored procedures. Then we learn that there are three different kinds of data models that is conceptual, logical, and physical. Then we also got to know that the main aim of conceptual model is to establish the entities, their attributes, and their relationships. In case of logical data model, which defines the structure of the data elements and set the relationship between them. And finally, we also learn about the physical data model, which describes the database specific implementation of the data model. Here, you should remember that the main goal of a designing data model is to make certain that data objects offered by the functional team are represented accurately. The biggest drawback is that even smaller change made in structure requires modification in the entire application, which is a disadvantage of data modeling. So this is it for this first module. In the next module, we are going to discuss about Star and Snowflake schema in Data Warehouse. So please stay tuned for the next video.